Hey there, everyone. So here we are on Tuesday of Holy Week. Uh, and uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, journey through this day a little bit with you in terms of what was Jesus up to on the Tuesday of this final week of his life, uh, bodily on earth, that is. Um, Tuesday was a full day for Jesus of teaching. And also, it was a day of tension, conflict with the religious establishment of his day. Um, conflict, there was always conflict in the life of Christ um, as he uh, came up against religion. And uh, no question uh, in the final week of Jesus that conflict escalated. And it all came to a head, as we know, uh, this coming Friday with uh, Jesus' trial and crucifixion. Um, and and his death and so um, obviously there's conflict right I don't know about you but conflict isn't fun none of us enjoy conflict um, but when you read the final week of of Jesus there's lots of conflict there are lots of um, uh, opportunities for Jesus enemies and those who opposed him and his teachings and his ways um, they came after him and so let's look at some examples here from Mark's Gospels Mark's Gospel, um, what do we find him doing on Tuesday? Um, well, these religious leaders are coming out after him. And so three quick examples. If you look at uh, um, Mark 11, uh, verses 27 to 33, um, the uh, chief priests and the teachers of the law um, and the elders of the people, they're the first ones to, uh, to kind of come after Jesus. So I'll just read to you what happens. Uh, starting at verse 27, Mark 11. Uh, they arrived again in Jerusalem, and while Jesus was walking in the temple courts, um, and we saw yesterday what he did in those temple courts, while the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders came to him, by what authority are you doing these things? They asked him. And who gave you the authority to do all of this obviously they're thinking about what happened yesterday in the cleansing of the temple we already heard yesterday that they were really mad at him for doing that and so now they're coming at him what authority do you have Jesus to do these things and Jesus replied I will ask you one question answer me and I will tell you by what authority I'm doing these things John's baptism was it from heaven or was it from men tell me well, they discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say from men, they feared the people, for everyone held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Jesus said, Then neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Uh, you got to love Jesus. Um, he answers their question with a great question of his own. And they wanted to trap him, and he ends up trapping them in their own words. you got to love the guy. Um, well, after this come the Pharisees and the Herodians. They come after him, another group of, of religious leaders in, in Jesus' day. And look at Mark 12, the next chapter of Mark, chapter 12, verses 13 to 17. We read this. Later, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to to Jesus to catch him in his words. They came to him and they said, Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Oh, this, you can just, you can just uh, kind of read between the lines here. It is, is it right, they say, to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? He asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. Denarius was one of their common coins. They brought the coin and he asked them, Whose portrait is this? Whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. Again, all of this opposition coming at Jesus and Jesus isn't trapped by it 
whatsoever. And then there's a final group, another group in uh, Mark 11, 12 that come. Uh, it's uh, the Sadducees. They come in uh, Mark 12, 18 to 27. And I won't read the whole passage, but they come after Jesus with basically a case study of, of marriage and the resurrection. And they bring their own agenda. The, Sa the Sadducees didn't believe in, in the resurrection. And so they try to trap Jesus with uh, what he believes and Jesus just corrects their understanding of what marriage really is and their theology of marriage in the first place. So again, um, for all of these religious leaders, Jesus was a threat. Um, Jesus threatened the religious establishment. There was something about him that uh, upset um, the religious leaders. And um, they, they couldn't see him for who he really was. They just saw how he threatened what they had built and what they had established. Jesus is a threat to religion. And, um, and so in the middle of all of this conflict, in the middle of all of this questioning by all of these different religious leaders, Jesus tells a story. He tells a parable and he's directing it to them. They know that he is. And, uh, Listen to the parable of the story that he tells. It's found in uh, chapter 12, the first 12 verses of Mark, chapter 12. Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, he dug a pit for the wine press, and he built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. But they seized him, they beat him, and they sent him away empty-handed. Then he sent another servant to them, and they struck this man on the head and treated him shamefully. He sent still another, and that one they killed. He sent many others, some of them they beat, and others they killed. He had one left to send, a son, whom he loved. And he sent him last of all, saying, They will respect my son. But the tenants said to one another, Here is the heir. Come, let's kill him, and his inheritance will be ours. So they took him, and they killed him, and they threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. Haven't you read this scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this. It is marvelous in our eyes. Jesus was a master storyteller and by telling this story about the tenants and the vineyard, he communicates exactly what he wanted to say to these religious leaders. These were the tenants. These were the ones who, who should have taken care of the vineyard, who should have cared for his people, should have recognized the very son of the owner of the vineyard and they didn't because they had their own agenda. And they had uh, their own desires and they uh, didn't want um, the owner of the vineyard and all of the messengers he had sent and all of those in the story. They didn't want them to take anything that they felt they owned. And uh, so they took care of um, those God sent. And obviously he, Jesus is referring to the prophets and and all of those who came before him with, with the truth of the gospel. So, um, as a result of this story, verse 12 says, they looked for a way to arrest him because they knew he had spoken this parable against them, but they were afraid of the crowd. So they left him and went away. So this was all happening on the Tuesday. So just some thoughts uh, for you to reflect on today. Religion can't see Jesus. Religion can't see him because the focus of religion is really man and not God. The focus of religion is really works and not grace. And so religion can't see Jesus. Uh, religion tries to take ownership of what is really God's. Uh, the vineyard was totally God's and religion tries to take what is really his and make it our own. Um, that's just what it does. Religion also couldn't see and accept Jesus when he came. 
They rejected him because they couldn't see past their own structures and constructs. Religion is truly threatened by Jesus Christ. And so I'm just so grateful on this uh, Tuesday of Holy Week that Jesus didn't come, hear this, he didn't come to establish another religion. Jesus didn't come to this planet to set up Christianity. He came to set us free from religion. He came to end religion. This sense of man trying to appease and please God on our own. He instead came um, to save us from religion. Um, to save us from our striving after God. And he came to, to save us and um, to rid this world of religion and man's efforts to reach him. Instead, Jesus reached out to us and uh, he came to give this world himself. And uh, so embrace Jesus today and throw Chuck religion because it's not working. It's never worked. And uh, so today on Tuesday, we learned that, uh, that Jesus came to end religion and to set us free from it. So be encouraged today. Father, thank you again for this week and this journey that we're on. Lord, thank you that um, we uh, were saved by your grace and not by our works or our own efforts. Thank you, God, for the great truth of, of the gospel um, that, uh, that we can't save ourselves. Lord, this, this whole time is reminding us that, Lord, we're, the whole world has been done in by this tiny little virus. We're so weak. We're so fragile. We are in need. And, uh, Lord, we all recognize that right now. We need um, a Savior. And we're so grateful, Father, that you sent forth your Son, Jesus, to save us from religion and to just give us a free, saving relationship with you. So we love you, Lord, and we're, gra we're grateful uh, for uh, what happened on this Tuesday of Holy Week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. See you later.